And next we have Gameport Blue Matter Series Version 1. Blue Matter Series written by Jules Bray. It is 326 pages, 99 cents. It is available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. Her last sim took everything she had. This one took what was left. Tasman Noinen, Noonan is level zero, and that's all she knows. She learns her name is her name from a stranger who seems more confused than she is about where they are. He can't even work the user interface. Tam is the one who figures out they're in a virtual reality game, one with no exit. Desperate for answers, she begins a series of quests to regain her memory. The more she learns, however, the more betrayed she feels. This isn't the first time she's been fooled into a virtual reality simulation, left to wonder what's real and what isn't. Last time, her own brother set her up, and it looks like he's done it again. But this time, the project leaders have lost control of the sim. The game has been infiltrated by saboteurs, some anti-tech religious fanatics who killed Tam's parents. They seem hellbent on destroying the sim and everyone in it. Tam has one chance to get her old life back, but it will mean joining forces with the people who deceived her, playing their game, and trusting everyone to get it right. So there you go. Um, I'll be honest, that novel description is a lot more interesting than this actual story, like a lot of it. Um, the it, That novel description actually describes a larger cyberpunkish plot where people wake up and find themselves without their memory in a fantasy RPG. They can regain their memories by mining a higher level resource, but first they have to choose a class and do starter quests and train. Um, the plot uh, focuses on this aspect and of, of why they lost their memories, the information being fed to them, and if any of it is true or not. It's actually not a terrible plot line of, 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 of like the cyberpunkish story, <laughs> storylines I've, I've read before. Um, this isn't bad. Like it kind of really does incorporate into like the game mechanics of, of, of a story of a game, like kind of story here. Um, however, that's not the majority of the story. And that's kind of unfortunate because it definitely conflicts with the general slice of life story that takes up, like, I want to say 60% of this novel. The other 40% is, is, is definitely deals with that plot line. Um, but a lot of that plot is, is really developed towards the middle to the end of the story. Um, the beginning half of it, the majority of it is very much like the slice of life. It feels like filler. It really does. Um, it is a little bit of story. I'm not saying it's not, but a lot of that early portion of the story feels like all the quests and storylines and adventuring they do. Um, it really just feels like filler to get to like the next little nugget of the plot line. And that's unfortunate. Um, the main character and a group choose their classes, quest level up as the resource gather, train, upgrade their equipment. But again, while their adventures aren't bad within themselves they don't feel like they're important because again, that, that plot line is always looming there where it's like, Oh, we're going to do some adventures and level and stuff. And they're like, here's the plot. It has nothing to do with like what you're, what you've been doing. And it's a literally a, a, a part of the story. Where like they're just kind of wasting time. Like it's, it's really part of the storyline where it's like, Oh, we're, we're trying to keep you guys occupied for a particular purpose. So all this leveling stuff, it, it's just kind of there to, to, to fill your time. Um, and I'm like, okay, you can, it definitely feels that way in the story for me, at least, uh, as a literary reader. Um, so that it, it just wasn't as enjoyable as I was hoping it would be. Um, game mechanic wise, it's kind of a semi custom system that will feel familiar to tabletop players. Um, fantasy D and D type quest classes, stats, skills, all that good stuff. Um, it's definitely crunchy with lots of notifications, character sheets, lots of gamer talk and thinking as the group, as the, uh, main character's group tries to level up and master their chosen classes um, on a game mechanic level. There's nothing really outstanding there. It's not bad though. It's, it's, it's kind of middle of the road. Um, the game mentality does come through clearly for the story and it's definitely liturgy. Um, overall though, I was kind of bored. Um, and again, part of that is because the, again, a lot of the stuff that's happened in the story is like, feels like it doesn't matter. So I'm like, I, it was really kind of hard to invest in the story and invest in the characters. Um, the characters have some personality um, and there's some decent dialogue and banter here, but I never cared about anybody. I never, I was never like invested in the main character or anybody really um, to see that they wanted to succeed or fail. It's like if they all would have been murdered, I'm like, oh, okay, there you go. End of the story. I, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have cared one way or the other. And part of that is the fact that nobody knows who they are. Um, and that's a big part of like the first half of that story. Um, so there's no background from, there's nothing like to really, for me to latch onto and, and to empathize with. Um, and even though that does shift in the story, um, by the time it does, I'm like, okay, I, I just haven't cared about this, th these characters for like the first half of those books. So why should I continue? Right. And so that was already something that, that was already working against the story to a degree. 
Um, another big issue is the fact that, again, um, a lot of the happens in the first part of the story just doesn't matter to the main cyberpunk plot. And even the stuff that happens afterwards, I was like, oh, I could probably skip all this stuff and still just like pick up the, the, the cyberpunk stuff and still have an enjoyable time or have a more enjoyable time. I would be skipping a lot of filler. Um, and that, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, even though that's even though it's not your experience reading it, um, it it just felt like the way that way to me. The RPG stuff comes through again as as uh, very clearly as like the, the author has gamer experiences, which is great. But it wasn't enough to kind of carry the entire story. Unfortunately, um, combat in the story is kind of mediocre, um, so it's not 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 a big draw there. Unfortunately, um, and again, while the adventures the the group kind of goes through aren't bad, again they're not important to the story at least to me. Um, and to, it felt like they're just like there to take a space until like every like 10 to 15 to 20%, like a new little nugget to the plot was revealed. Um, so there you go. Uh, didn't really work for me. It's kind of bored. It gets a score of five out of 10 for me, which is just, just bored. Um, so it's game port blue matter series volume one or version one with the score of five out of 10. 